This morning, we are taking a closer look at brain eating amoeba. Florida has the highest rate of infection. And while it is rare, this time of year specifically presents the highest risk of infection because the amoeba lives in warm water found often in lakes and rivers. Dr. Mobian Rathor is a pediatric infectious disease doctor with UF Health and Wolfson Children's Hospital and joins us via Zoom this morning. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Jen. So would you explain how this bacteria gets into the body? Yeah, Jen, this bacteria uh, actually lives in uh, freshwater lakes, uh, other bodies of water. And uh, when somebody uh, usually dives in but uh, swims in that bodies of water, they are at risk of getting the uh, this, this amoeba. Uh, and uh, it, it really lives in the sediment uh, of the uh, floor of the lakes and the bodies of water. So anything that you will disturb that, or dig in the sediment can also increase the risk of infection with this amoeba. And is this something that you can get by ingesting water or is it specific into how it gets into the body? Well, I think the way it gets in the body is through the nose. And so if, uh, that's why when somebody's diving into the water uh, and that the water is infested with this amoeba or, you know, they, they hit the, uh, the, the floor of the body of water, if you will, uh, and disturb the uh, sediment, it could get into there. I mean, there are parts of the world where uh, people rinse their uh, nose uh, for evolution and you can get negleria from that also. This is basically the, uh, the uh, amoeba gets through the nose and uh, through the bone between the nose and the brain, it gets into the brain. And, and I know you mentioned freshwater, and I just want to make it clear, since so many people flock to our beaches, is this something that someone has to worry about in the ocean? Not in the ocean. This is not a, a amoeba you're going to, an infection you could get from the ocean. This uh, uh, organism uh, likes hot, hotter waters, warmer waters. It can survive as high as 115 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So uh, usually our beaches are, are safe from uh, neglaria. And what about the St. John's River? Uh, St. John's River should generally be safe, but there, are, there may be parts of it in uh, sort of the little outlets, inlets, where there may be standing water uh, or there may be brackish water. Uh, that could potentially do it, but it's in general, uh, I, I don't know if I would recommend people to swim in St. John's uh, River, but uh, uh, it's usually safe. It's usually freshwater lakes and such, um, the standing water that would be the highest risk. And is there something then that can be done to prevent it? Yeah, that's the sad part of it. There's not a whole lot one can do to prevent other than making sure if you are in a swimming pool, the swimming pool is well maintained, well chlorinated, well clean. And there you can do a, a you know, $1 uh, preventive measure is to use a nose clip. I think if you're going to be diving in the uh, bodies of fresh water, just a nose clip would, you know, you, you just put it on your nose and uh, it may not prevent it completely, but it certainly would decrease the opportunity for the water to get into your brain through your nose. So that's something you can do. It does not guarantee that it will protect you, but certainly would decrease the chances of water getting into your nose and through that to your brain. And given that most of the cases we see are children because they're more apt to be spending a lot of time exactly. in water, so keep that in mind for our viewers. What are the warning signs, Dr. Rathor? Because it's my understanding if not caught early, this is nearly always fatal. Yeah, that's the challenge that early on it may just be fever, headache, nausea, vomiting, and a lot of kids get that. But later on, there may be a change in sensorium. People may be have balance changes, neck may be stiff, more headaches, you know, something which looks like meningitis. Uh, and then it can rapidly progress to encephalitis when you go into a coma. And you are absolutely right. Uh, the, 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 up, the treatment for this is not very effective, to be very honest with you. Uh, the, the most of the, unfortunately, uh, most of the people who get this infection uh, pass away for several reasons. One, we don't really have a very good uh, treatment for There is a drug called Miltifosin, which is uh, available to the CDC. But again, most of these, unfortunately, uh, end up in fatalities because, as you can imagine, in, Early on, it just looks like a viral infection. And then once it gets recognized, it's it's a little bit late. And there's nothing you can do about that because everybody who has headache, nausea, vomiting does not have uh, what we call primary amoebic uh, meningoencephalitis or PAM. Uh, so I think it's hard. There have been a couple of cases of survival uh, with this infection. But again, remember, this is a rare infection over a 10-year period in the United States. Only 31 cases were seen, so about three cases a year. Uh, southeast uh, part of the United States seems to be uh, with the highest number of cases. Flor higher number of cases in Florida does have the highest number of cases. 
uh, with this uh, in, uh, infection. And uh, I, I think in, in the warm temperatures, in, in warm parts of the uh, year, July, August, September, the risk is the highest. Dr. Mobin Rathor, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jen.